Amazing. Awesome. All right, everyone, welcome once more this evening. So tonight we're having a special session. This session is uh, being backed by entrepreneurs and also being sponsored by Make Life. I'm teaching you a session from um, the International Labor Organization's uh, program known as IYB. Uh, so in particular, this is uh, a component of Start Your Business. Uh, just a quick background on uh, ILO, SIYB. This is a program that the International Labor Organization has been running for many years now, uh, about almost about 50 to 60 years, and it's been very uh, effective. It's always improved upon by master trainers and trainers alike. It's, um, it's available in different countries along the world, including Sri Lanka, talk about China. It's a very effective program. Uh, even here in Zambia, we take time to train people in government, we train people that uh, are being empowered by, for example, maybe the British organization. So what I'm teaching you today is standard for financial planning. Um, it's a standard that works. Uh, this is more in tune with people that are starting businesses. Um, so if you're a startup at any level, uh, this is going to be something that will help you with a financial plan. As you may all know, financial planning is important. Or well, let's just say finance is important. I was asking myself the other day to say that, what's the equivalent of food for businesses? You know, because if you look at human beings, there's something that we can't do without for the most part uh, is food. You know, apart from spirituality and everything, food is something that we want every day. Okay, whether you, uh, you don't have the money, you will find the money to buy food. So I asked myself, then what is the, what's the food for businesses? And businesses, the food is money. No matter what business you're running, you will need money at some point. And that's why financial planning becomes important. So just before I get into this, how many of us want to have money? Like for our business, how many of us want to have money? How many of us want businesses that have money and are money healthy? Just uh, go ahead and type in a yes into the chat box. Is it? Okay, great. Simba says me. Yes. Ankomba says yes. Okay. Waiting for more, so says me, amazing. Yes, from Isaac. Uh, your businesses will have money now, <laughs> a lot of it. Definitely me, nice, Mutale. Thanks for that, great to have you for the first time. Awesome, yes, from Charity, thank you, Charity. Even doctors must have money. It's good to see that you're here and uh, you're planning it, wonderful. <laughs> great, all right, so um, let's get started, eh? Uh, and find out more about money and how we, how we build this finance. Uh, to get started, and before I just get started, just want to appreciate those entrepreneurs once more for allowing such a platform to continue. Uh, a big up to Aaron and the team, Hong Kong Boy and everyone we presented here. We appreciate your efforts towards furthering uh, entrepreneurship in Zambia and just taking this initiative. You have me come every Saturday uh, and be with you guys. Uh, you know, today I might have not made it, Aaron is the one who made it. I told me, Mapalo, please make it by all means. And I said, you know what? I will be there. You know, because I had quite a number of things to do with uh, Make Life, with kind of setting up uh, an office space um, after COVID that we've been doing. So I had to run around a bit. But I'm here tonight. And thank you so much, the team, for what you're doing. All right, so let's get started. A bit about financial planning. Uh, what is financial planning? Uh, and this is something that I want to put out there. So financial planning, I'm not going to complicate this for you. Financial planning is where you sit down to plan the financial future of your business. So it could be an immediate plan, a short-term plan, or it could be a long-term plan. Okay, just the same way we sit down to plan. There's what they call tactical planning, all right? So tactical planning is normally done by people that are in lower management or people that are doing the operations. It's more short-term planning, right? Then strategic planning is planning that's long-term. If you're planning, say, more than a year, we would call that strategic planning for your business. And um, as an entrepreneur, you need to do a whole lot of planning because it's very important to manage your business. Remember, this is a management insight. And any of you who've got some background in management, you're going to be taught that Management has got four basic functions. And if you're writing, not write them down. I didn't put them in this slide. 
So the first function of management is planning, all right? As a manager at any level, you need to know how to plan. And that's why we're talking about financial planning tonight. The second thing is organizing. Organizing is where you're able now to allocate tasks to people after you've planned. So if you have a team, you plan on the finance, you plan on the strategies, then organizing is where you assign to people, to departments, to certain um, aspects of the business. So it's planning, then organizing. The third thing is what we call influencing. This is where you lead. This is where we've been talking about how you need to be able to lead at times your team and everything. So now the third thing, the third function about management is influencing. Okay, and the final one is what is known as controlling. Controlling, this is where now monitoring and evaluation comes in and you're able to see whether you're accomplishing the objectives of the business or maybe whether you're falling back on your planning. So likewise, tonight we're talking about financial planning, which is a component of financial management. So if you're going to manage your finances, like we said, finance, in my own words, is the food for businesses. So if you're going to manage the food for your business, okay, something that your business definitely needs at a certain point in time, you're going to need to have knowledge in financial planning, all right? At some point, maybe we may get to look a bit more into other aspects of finance, but this is the core thing. This on its own is what's going to help you save your business. So these are steps to building your financial plan. And I hope we'll be able to look at at least two of these tonight very critically. If we have time, I'm going to, I'm going to go to uh, the Isle of Booklet because when we train this uh, under a full training, like I said, um, MedClive will be hosting a full training. We'll be releasing the dates for all our training events uh, this particular month, including the 10 of 10 for those of you who've been wanting and asking me about how to, for those particular 10 of 10, the certifications that you have got access to a discount for those of you who come for these programs. But we'll be releasing that and um, partly we're also going to release a full course if you want to get certified in this program fully, you do let us know if it's something that you want. But why we not, I want to share with you quite a bit here as well tonight. So these are four steps. Make a profit plan. Okay, the first thing to financial planning is you need to make a profit plan. Then when you make a profit plan, you then need to build what we call a cash flow plan, all right? So the first thing is a profit plan, and the second thing is a cash flow plan. Then when you've done that, those two are very important for your plans. Then you have to compare the financial records, okay? You compare those financial records with both plans every month. So when you, as a business, when you're recording, uh, you, when you sell, you receipt your customer. That particular receipt must be recorded. The, the number of the receipt, we call it a voucher. So you have to put voucher one, voucher two. That's another course on its own record keeping. But as you're in business, you're going to be creating financial records. Receipts, uh, um, the payments you make, you have to be keeping that. Uh, when you sell, you keep those receipts. So now you compare your financial records where you've had your sales incoming for the month, against your costs, and now you have to compare them with both the profit plan and the cash flow plan, which I'll share with you. Then fourthly, take action if anything is not going according to plan, which is the real point of planning, because when you have a plan, uh, when you move advanced in what we call controlling, this is what it's about. You need to make sure to see, oh, are my plans working out for my business? If it means your financial plan is not working, you have to be able now to make the changes. For your business. I hope uh, it's clear what I'm sharing. So that's uh, how you go about financial planning for a business. These four steps are very important. So now let me talk about a profit plan. So what we'll look at tonight is making a profit plan and making a cash flow plan. These two particular things are that I'm going to look at. The other, uh, the other two steps, third and fourth, are easy for you to be able to do, like I've been able to refer to but this is what you want to learn how to do. So what then is a profit plan? And just, just a moment, sorry. I kind of feel I'm, I'm skipping to the profit plan because I really want to talk about it, but let me first build the base like I love doing every uh, Saturday when we meet. So why is this even important for you to learn? Why do we need a financial plan, right? Um, and this is why. Normally during the first few months after a business begins operating, it is very difficult to recover costs or to make a profit. Those of you in business are going to attest to this. The first 
days of business, the first few months, at times, it's very difficult for you to actually make a profit. Some estimations even show that there are companies that go for as long as a year before they start making any profit from the business. So if you just recently started business and you haven't yet made profit, let me encourage you, you are not alone, right? <laughs> you are not alone. It's something very normal about businesses, especially if they're the right type of businesses. At times, they may take some time before you actually get into a certain level of profit because you need to really have to put in a whole lot in up, up front before you can start getting your money into business, before you start getting your profit. Uh, I have invested quite a lot in Make Life before I began to see any reasonable amount of profit coming from it to a point where I can now sit back and say, okay, now I'm excited, now I'm happy. The certain things that are now working. Uh, but it takes quite a while. It takes uh, devotion. It takes time for you to be able to start seeing that. And that's why you need a financial plan, all right? It's not easy to make your profit. So if you're not going to be making profit, you want to stay in business. And that's why businesses are very vulnerable at the start. And you must keep a careful eye on the financial situation, right? So as a startup, you are very vulnerable. Like I said, you're not bringing in any, your sales may not be high. They may not be frequent. They may be varied across a number of options. Maybe you sell a bit in the first month and people go paid, but then you have quiet days. So now you need a financial plan if you have to stay in business because as a startup, your business is vulnerable, all right? And you need a financial plan to ensure that you stay in business. When we talk of management, we normally advise startups that the first, uh, the short term goal for your business should be to survive, right? <laughs> you first must survive. In the first month, you must survive. Then as you survive and become more uh, resilient, the next goal must be to now grow profitability. And that's the difference. So as a startup, the first thing that you might want to do sometimes is just survive. Just stay in business sometimes. Just keep afloat, keep the brand alive. Initially, that should be your short-term goal. Uh, but then as you grow now, you need to now have a plan for profit. And that's why when we talk of a financial plan, it's really important for you to have it now as a startup. It's very important for you to have it now, even as you're planning for a business, to know this information on how to go about it. Uh, more reasons as to why uh, we should actually be doing this. Let me just get all of this up in front of you. When you start your new business, these two things are very important. The first thing is do not run out of cash. Whatever you do, <laughs> don't run out of cash when you're starting your business. Make sure that in your financial plan, you find a way to always have money. It's very simple, right? Just two things. This, this is what I've, I've made it. I've made it easy for you right now. Two things that you must have in the back of your mind when it comes to money in your business. One, do not run out of cash, right? The second thing is make sure that the operation you have created will eventually become profitable. So with these two things, I, might, if I, can, I can almost stop this session because I've communicated something very big and very deep for you as a startup. Don't run out of cash. If you run a business, you know how bad it is when you don't have money. The business, the vibe goes out, the energy for most people involved might, you know, leave the business. It's, there's always a certain kick, you know, when there's some level of finance in a company, when there's, you know, some money moving around, some cash here, some cash flow, uh, you're able to purchase and resell. So you must be very careful to protect your cash flow. And I'll talk a bit about that. But as a business, two things that you must have for a proper financial plan is I shouldn't run out of cash and that eventually this operation, whether it's cakes, whether it's clothing, whether you're into service business, you should be very sure that, okay, this operation will create me a profit. It's profitable. It means that you've gone through some of the things I've talked about in the previous sessions, like you've been able to assess your market, like is your market large enough? Those of you that attended the session that I covered um, should be last, last week, eh? Uh, when I was talking about Lucy B. I don't know how many of you remember Lucy B. Can I get a bit of people in the, in the chat being able to type Lucy B if you remember Lucy B? You know, let me just see some, some engagement, see if, if people are, were following last week. Anyone to type in Lucy B if you followed? Anybody? Let's see. You've forgotten. 
let's see if I'm going to get some chats. Oh, you should type in. Anyone that remembers the last week's session when I talked of Lucy B. Mondok, I'm expecting from you that you would have remembered last week's session. Okay. Or am I audible? Perhaps I'm not audible. Um, can someone confirm? If I'm audible enough. Okay, thank you. Okay, so Mondoka says he remembers. Okay, great. All right. Um, awesome. So Lucy B is how you define or how you quickly just get to your problem. I talked of how it should be large enough. It should be urgent. Uh, it should be specific. It should be important and beneficial. So if you've done your homework and you've solving the right problem, then probably what you're doing should be profitable at the end of the day. There's a real problem you are solving out there. So these two things, hope they're clear. Don't run out of cash. Make sure that your operation is profitable. Let's now look at making a profit plan, all right? This is how you make a profit plan. So now, before making a profit plan, these are things that you need to know. You must make both a sales plan and a cost plan, right? These are two important things. You can't make a profit plan without a sales plan and a cost plan being in effect for your business. So that's something that's important. and that I wanted to communicate straight away. And I'm going to ask what then is profit? Because profit is sales minus costs of your business equal to profit. As simple as that. Today is a bit mathematical. So if you hate math, I hope you will still enjoy this topic. I hope I'm trying to make it fun enough. Uh, there's no way to teach financial planning without math. Otherwise, it will only be story, which is not effective. Like I've always told you, I don't teach you things here that are theory. I teach you things that are practicable, as you can hear from Isaac, and also a number of you that have told me what you've been up to, you are seeing results, because I believe in results. So you cannot have a proper financial plan without knowing this basic math here. Your profit is your sales minus cost, all right? And before making a profit plan, you must make both a sales plan and a cost plan. Two key plans that are important. And since I told you that tonight I'm looking at how I'm, I'm going to show you how to make your profit plan, then also how to make your cash flow plan. I want to be able to, to communicate that. All right, well noted, Mutali. Great. So let's make some progress. So profit is the amount of money left after you have subtracted all costs of your business from its total sales. All right, so don't forget that. It's good to see those who join. So Chrissy Kasiku in. So I shared to the team that to have an effective financial plan, two things you shouldn't forget is one, don't run out of cash. The second thing is make sure your operation is profitable. So now let's move on to a sales plan because like I've said, you can't have a profit plan without a sales plan and a cost plan. You need those two things. So now what is a sales plan, right? So a sales plan shows the sales your business is likely to have each month, okay? And notice the word used, likely to have each month. So meaning this plan must be made even before you start selling for that month. So before I start selling for August, I must have a sales plan. So then how is that possible? Thank you. I want to share the link to the chat. Those of you who are not in the WhatsApp group where we share the links and everything, make sure you join the WhatsApp group where you can get helped. Um, so a sales plan shows you the sales your business is likely to have each month, right? And how then are you able to know how likely? Uh, I hope I get to teach you this, but there's what we call market, there's what we call a marketing plan and what we call a sales estimation plan. Please be writing down or make sure you listen to the audio when we share this uh, in the group. It's always uh, post uh, the video recordings are always posted in the group, eh? So you need either you need a marketing plan and a sales estimation plan for you to be able to write down your sales plan. So a marketing plan means that I'm going to plan to maybe say, let me let me take a school for example, like Unza, since we're in Unza Preneurs. If my target market is within Unza, I'm going to be able to make a marketing plan. And my marketing plan, the goal is for me to be able to determine how much of the market, what percentage are going to be buying my cakes, for example, 
right? Because I know Chisimba here does cakes. So now if Chisimba knows says that out of the people that eat cakes in Unza, there's about 10,000 people, and that's 100% market. She's going to then say, oh, okay, out of that 100%, uh, uh, for the first uh, few months, I want to ensure that 10% of that 10,000 people are mine, which is like what, 1,000 people. So that's what we call a sales estimation. So she knows her market. She's made a market plan, says I'm going to capture 10% of uh, the market. So that's wait, a market estimation. Then with that now, she makes a sales estimation. A sales estimation is now where she knows the price she'll be selling each cake, say is maybe 200. And then she knows she's selling to 1,000 people. So she knows in a month, it's going to be 200 times what? 1,000, which is 200,000 kwacha. And she's going to be making 200,000 kwacha within, um, so, so she's saying to a 1,000 and that's 200, to be 200,000 kwacha within a month. So now that's what we call her sales estimation. So whether in a service business, uh, like I said, if you need to have your business survive, make sure you're not lazy about making a, a financial plan. So be able to estimate, it's okay, in the month of June, I'm estimating that we're going to sell this amount. And when you make that plan, you're more likely to reach those goals if you have that written down. So all of you, if you've not been making a plan today, please go and start. I've already communicated, have a market estimation, have a sales estimation. That's where now you can be able to now fill in your sales plan. So a sales plan shows you the sales your business is likely to have. Now let me show you a practical example of a business. No, okay. So it's, uh, I've been put the business name here. Uh, let me. So this business deals in super organic uh, fertilizers. So this is a sample of their sales plan, right? Uh, and we're using dollars for this particular example that I'm showing you. So the products here that are here, you can see there are four products right there is super organic there is um, super organic retail there is organic direct and organic retail right so we're looking at how they're selling this particular product so when you say super organic direct over there you're now able to see that that particular one there is it's it's uh, when you're selling it directly but then when it's sold in retail it's got a different price point and you know so those the products are there for you. So now, this is how you do a sales plan. So take a screenshot of this so that you capture how you can do it. This is a basic template. I want you to use it. It's recommended by ILO uh, in the SYB program. It's very effective for you to be able to utilize this right now. It's basic. You can go ahead and design it in your own way, but the framework should be the same. Like I said, I love being practical. So now let's just take time to look at some of these numbers here. I have my calculator here. If you have a calc, you can have it. Uh, this is a very different session than we normally have. It's very practical, right? So the sales price, let's look at the first um, column here. The sales price in dollars is $9 for the month of June, right? Uh, and you can see the price has been spread across all the way to December. So in the year 2020, this uh, firm, which we're going to call um, John, John Fertilizers, right? John Fertilizers has determined they'll sell each bag here at $9 for the whole year, right? And then they say the sales volume. The sales volume is how much of this product is they intend to sell. So they say, okay, we're going to sell 480 of those bags in the month of June. By July, our market, you know, will be better. We may get to sell 720, then we'll target to sell 800 by August, and then 1,000 by September, and you see it rising up to the end. And you see a total there for the sales volume. Then now the sales value. The sales value here is the multiplication of the sales price. Right? Are you getting that? So let's just do that now, the math. So that I show you what you get. So if you'd multiply 9 by 480, you get 4,320 that's your sales value so your sales value this is how much revenue is coming out from selling the super organic bank in the month of june provided that your sales volume estimated is uh, met so that's how you do the 
No, no you, you just should, sorry, sorry, sorry. You can, you think, you can also see. Sorry, uh, I, I think. Another question from Hong Kong boys. Mike, Mike, just. Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, so I was, just, I was going to say, just kindly like repeat the sales value. Like how you get value. Sales okay, value. let me repeat that. So the sales yes. value is the multiplication of the sales price and the sales volume. All right. So that nine dollars times four hundred and eighty. Yeah. That's your sales value. That's the value you get from selling that bag for the month of June. Is that clear now? Yes, it is. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. Please ask questions. This is math today. So let's make sure we, you know, we are engaged. Don't let get left out. <laughs> I'm here for you. I hope that's clear for everyone. Um, then you can see in July, he says, okay, we're going to take the sales volume to 720. So John Petalizer says, okay, 720 for July. So nine by 720 gives us 6,480, right? So that's how much the sales value is for the month of July. So he has a sales plan that goes all the way to December. Let me ask you, do you have a sales plan that goes up to August at least? If not, it's time for you to get to the drawing board and start making a sales plan for your cakes, for your graphics, uh, for whatever business you're in, your mascara, your products, if you're in a program, a network marketing program that's working for you, make that plan, make a sales plan. It's very important. So now let's move to the next product. You see super organic retail. There there's $8 and sales volume is 1,600. So for the month of June, he intends to sell 1,600 of these particular bags in retail at $8 a bag. And the multiplication of that in the sales value, he hopes to be able to get 12,800 from the sales value, from the sales for that product in that month. So now, an example, if you have got cakes, for example, this same example, if you're saying you're selling the cakes at 100 kwacha, okay, 200 kwacha for Shiba, maybe she's selling them at 200 kwacha, and she targets to say, okay, I'm going to sell about, um, 50 cakes in the month of June, all right? So her sales price is what? 200 kwacha. Her sales value for the month of June is 50 cakes. So what's going to, sorry, her sales volume is 50 cakes. So what's going to be her sales value? If someone has a calculator, calculate for us. I have the answer. <laughs> the answer is even there, but <laughs> anybody? So 200 sales price, sales volume is 50. Can someone tell us what her sales value is in Kwacha? Or Chishimba herself? Class, please, let's be interactive. 200 Kwacha sales price, sales volume is 50. What's her sales value for that month? 10,000. 10,000. Thank you so much. It is 10,000. So that's how much her sales value. So since We've gotten this clearly. Let me now move to the bottom. You see where now it says total sales value. So total sales value, thank you for posting that 10,000 in the group. So the total sales value now is a sum total of all the products you are selling in that month. So if you've got multiple products, you sell more than cakes, maybe you sell muffins, you also sell uh, scones, your products all fall in the sales plan. Then you now calculate your total sales value for that month. I hope that's clear on the sales plan. So that I can now move to the cost plan. And when, you, when we do the cost plan, then I'll show you how you do the profit plan. Is that okay? That's okay. Let me make progress. Um, so total sales value. But I feel I haven't yet finished. Some people here assume I have questions. So you do the same for all the months, right? Then as you, as you can see, you are calculating all the values here, the total values at the end of the day. So now you're able to see the 348,992. That's the overall sales value for that entire time period. Okay, for that entire time period. So if this was 12 months, that would be how much revenue you're expecting from selling these three products by the end of the year. Wouldn't it be nice for you to be able to do this and go show your potential investor and tell them, look, uh, this is our sales plan for the year 2020. 
this is how much we look for we are looking to make in revenues uh, with our plan going right so i've given you something that can work for you please utilize it let me go to a cost plan remember to do your profit plan you need a sales plan and a cost plan that's when you can do your profit plan because a profit is what sales minus cost equal to profit so now a cost plan a cost plan will show you the cost your business is likely to have each month right so to make such a plan you need the variable cost per item and the total cost per month of your business so the variable cost and a total fixed cost per month of your business that's what you need so it's very very important that you take time to understand what i'm about to share so like again very practical let me now run you through a cost plan you can take a screenshot you can ask someone to share this in the group they can take a screenshot for you they'll share it in the group those of you maybe your phone is not able to uh, or you're using a laptop um, that is how you do a cost plan so now let's just take time to look at it like we did with the sales plan so for a sales plan you see the super organic again and there's organic all right so here now you see production volume and variable cost per item all right so there's production volume and variable cost per item so now you also get to see something at the bottom called total fixed cost i want you to see that total fixed cost so before I get into the detail of the numbers, let me just tell you what production volume is. Let me define them for you. Production volume, this is how many of that product you are going to make, all right? That's how many of that product you're going to make for the month of June. So sometimes, like for, let's go back to that example for Chishimba. So she says she's going to sell 50 cakes. Let's assume she makes all her cakes before she sells them. That, those 50 are going to be her production volume. So there are times when your production volume is equal to your uh, sales volume, right? Let me show you that again. So we had sales volume. So sometimes your production volume is equal to your sales volume. Sometimes they may vary. So your production volume is how much of that product you are going to make. Then your variable cost here, your variable cost is the cost that are required to actually make that product. That's what we know as a variable cost. So those are costs such as uh, buying ingredients, for example. So all the ingredients that will go into Shimba's cake, that's, uh, those are variable costs. So if she gets a bit of flour here, a bit of uh, caster sugar there, you know, a bit of butter there, those are variable costs. So she needs to be able to cost for that. Remember, a financial plan is very important because I mentioned the two things that you shouldn't do as a startup is don't run out of cash and make sure that your product or your operation is profitable. So to do that, so that you don't run out of cash, make sure you know your variable cost for each product. So for, now let's look at this example. So production volume are at 2,080 or what super organic fertilizer for John fertilizers. And the variable cost to make one fertilizer bag is what? $6.5. Now I want you to take note of that, just hold that for a moment. So you see the cost is $6, let's go back to the sales plan. How much is this selling it, the super organic? At retail it's at $8, at, at uh, direct is at $9. So you see he's already making a profit because his variable costs are at $6. But then again, he has to know the total fixed costs for the business. I'll, tell, I'll share that again. But you can see he's already ensuring that for what he's making the fertilizer for is below how much he's selling it. So like she's saying, but for example, she always wants to ensure that for any cake she sells, she is making it at a lesser price. So the ingredients should not be more than the cake price then total variable cost this is the total variable cost and you can see here it says one times three and what's one production volume what's two the variable cost so for you to be able to know the total variable cost 
be able to multiply your production volume times your variable cost. Please, it's only simple math. Don't, don't think it's complicated, because if you think complicated, it will feel that way. But it's simply production volume is how much of the product you're making. In Simba's case, she's making 50. And each cake, she's selling it at 200, but her variable cost for the cake are coming to 150. So it means that her total variable cost is what? That 50, uh, 50 cakes that she's baking times the 150. That will give her the total variable cost. It's different from her sales volume, which is like we covered in the sales plan, the amount of cakes she's selling multiplied by the price. Please follow me. So now she'll do that. He does that for all the months. For July, you can see his production volume is increasing. But then in August, it reduces. So sometimes you may say, okay, there's a certain months that people don't buy fertilizer because this period of time, people are what? Are waiting now to harvest, maybe. It's harvest period, no one is planting fertilizer. So for this business model, he knows the months that he, he won't be selling so many. He may only be selling to greenhouses that are able to have certain environments all the time. Then he increases in November because it's back again to rain season then December again. So that's how you plan for your cost plan. Then you can see it does the same for the organic fertilizer here. He's got the production volume for the month of June, July, August, September, all the way through, and the variable cost for each. Then he's got the what? Total variable cost for this one as well. Now, when he does that, since they're all in one business, he comes to total variable cost of the business. So that was for the product, now for the entire business, because you want to know what are the overall costs. So if you're selling four products, you're selling cakes, muffins, scones, like Shima maybe is doing, make sure you get from her. Um, you then now have total variable costs of the entire business by adding them together. So that way now you know all the costs that it will cost you to have your business run for June so that you can meet all your sales, estimated sales. Then when you know that now, you can do that for all the months you are planning for. It can be four months up to 12 months. You get your total variable cost of the business. Please, these templates are valid. You can use them to be able to even keep your books as a business, okay? You can show them to investors. You'll like it if you present it like this. You can just decorate them anyhow you want, but this concept can work for you. Total fixed cost. Now, your total fixed cost is costs like the rentals that you have for your business and the, and the, and the salaries. If you pay salaries uh, like we do, you're going to have total fixed costs, okay? So your total fixed costs, you need to have also, um, so it could be salaries, it could be the rent that you pay. If you pay rent as well, that's also part of your total fixed costs. These are costs that don't change. The variable cost will be changing depending on your production volume because those are, that's, those are the costs for the things going inside making the actual product. But your total fixed cost remains constant. So for you to be profitable, you have to know your total fixed cost for the year as a startup. If you're having any of those, some of them, some of you maybe you don't yet have salaries, you don't yet have rentals. So maybe you don't yet have total fixed cost. But for you to still know that your business is how viable it is. Even if you're staying at your home and that's where you do your business from, you need to take into consideration how much your mom is paying for the house. Because if you start thinking that your business is profitable, what happens the day you move out of the house? You realize that, ah, Kansha was selling below. So make sure that you still take into account the, the, the room you use to create your product. That kitchen, if it's not your kitchen, calculate it to say, okay, let me assume that I'm paying uh, 1,000 to rent my mom's kitchen. Add it into your cost plan so that you have a, a, a realistic uh, estimation of whether you're, a profit, you're in profit or not. Otherwise, you can find you're just breaking even and you think you're making money. Then the day you decide to go all out, all of a sudden you find uh, you're not making enough money. So it's very important to know your total fixed cost and you put them in your what cost plan. Then when you now do that, you now calculate the Total variable cost plus the total fixed cost, that gives you the what? The total costs now for your business. So you've got total variable costs, you've got total fixed costs, 
and then now the total costs, which is the variable cost plus the fixed costs. I hope that's clear. Do we have questions at this part? Remember, I don't want to lose anyone. Is everything clear? Anyone with a question, please ask before I now go to the profit plan so that you know how to make a profit. Any questions? Or it's clear? If it's clear, you can say it's clear for you. Please just give me some feedback. This today's session, I want it to be interactive because I know I'm dealing with numbers and numbers are something interesting. Okay, someone says clear. Someone says clear. Thank you. Patient says clear. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Isaac says clear. Okay, great. Means I'm a good teacher or you're a good student. So we're both. Awesome. If I'm getting a lot of clears, that's good then. Clear as well. Okay, great. So now let's go to a profit plan. So what is a profit plan? Well, a profit plan at the end of the day is, like I said, the plan that shows you whether you are actually making profit, your sales minus your costs. So that's your profit plan. And also shows you also, it's also a plan to show for you to be able to plan how profitable you want to become. Like I said, you don't want to deceive yourself. You're staying in your mom's house and you think you're making a profit. So charge accordingly. Your price can greatly be determined by how much costs are entering in your product. If you're always selling your product without calculating the amount of money you spend on transport to go to town, calculating the amount of money you are using your mom's oven, you find you'll be selling your cakes at 200 when you should be selling them at three. And then it means that you are not saving yourself very well. So it's very important to understand the cost going into your business for you to know whether you're in profit or you're just simply breaking even or you're making losses. So to do your profit plan, follow these particular steps, right? Get the information from your sales plan and cost plan, which I've shared with you. All right, and you've all said clear, so I believe I'm good on this one. Then put the information in your profit plan, right? Uh, your profit plan from, I already showed you, I told you, you can't do your profit plan without cost plan and sales plan. Then do the calculations on the profit plan form to find the likely gross net profit for your business in the first year. So gross and net profit, right? You need to be able to know both of these. Uh, your gross profit is the profit, uh, this will be the profit before taxes. All right? Then your net profit is the profit after you've been taxed. I'm obligated to tell you that you must be a legal business. <laughs> so your gross profit is your profit before tax. The net profit is your profit after tax. This is the one that you and your uh, board of directors, your co-founders and shareholders can enjoy as dividends after one year. Yeah, it's the net profit, not the gross. So you need to be able then to calculate that likelihood of it. Yeah, so that's clear. Let's do now, let me show you a profit plan. So this is how a profit plan looks like. So a profit plan is total sales, which I showed you. Remember the end of your sales plan. Let me go back because maybe you've forgotten, right? At the end of the sales plan, at the bottom, what did we have? Total sales. All right, so that was the total sales for all the products that you've estimated. So you estimated you sell 480 bags at nine dollars in the month of June, and your total sales for June was at the bottom. So now your profit plan, that's the value you get here. Total sales 51,748. Okay, let me go to the sales plan. Are you there? Are you seeing the, pla the, the amount at the bottom? 51,748. So that's the same amount is taken and put in the profit plan for the month of June. Those are his total sales. So again, for July, 65,184. Let me go back. I don't want to lose anyone. That's the amount he gets from the total sales for July and puts it in his profit plan. All right. And he does that all the way through to December and has his total at 348,999. Then total variable cost. Remember the cost plan? So here for June, he, he calculated 38,584. Let's go back to confirm. What was his total variable costs? 
38,584. You've seen there, right? Below organic, there's total variable cost of the business. So for the month of June for that product was 38,584. That's the amount he took and he's put it in his profit plan. And he's put it under variable cost. And he does that for all the months. Then gross profit, net profit. This is what he wants to calculate, right? Um, and let me just um, do that. His gross profit in this situation is the amount of money that he's subtracting from the sales to the total profit. So this is another dimension to gross profit. Um, apart from the taxation, taxation we deal with it in the advanced session with ILO, but it's also it's before it's taxed. I don't want to add that for now, but I just have told you. But then it's also considered that your total fixed costs are not counted as well. They only get counted at the end. And let me just show you that. Before I go to that, let me just get to run you through the gross profit here. So for the gross profit, you're able to see 38,000 is your variable cost and 51,000 is your total sales. Remember profit is what sales minus cost. So when you subtract that, you get 13,000. But then when you subtract 8,964, what do you get next? You get 4,200 and that's your net profit. And that's how you calculate. So if you don't know how much, um, for example, sometimes you ask yourself to say, how do I put in certain costs into my business? Like how do I account for rentals, what not? You first need to know where it falls, if it's in variable cost or it's in uh, total cost. So like in Chishimba's case, total cost would be the rentals. The variable cost would be the ingredients, yes, and the electricity she's using would go into variable costs because they're going towards using the actual product. By the end of the day, now you're able to calculate your gross profit and your net profit. And you can now see that done for gas september october up to the end this is 2028 i don't know if you want me to share the cost plan but i think to be disciplined with time let me take some questions i hope this has been helpful the cash flow plan would be nice to have covered it as well and i predicted that i might not get to cover it because of how i needed to cover this so i ended the slides here but i've got another slide which i can't i can open but i think perhaps it would be better to um, allow Mondoka to. Okay. Mondoka, can you just. Uh, awesome. All right, Mondoka, let me hand over to you to see if there are questions. Yes, Mofia, you ask a question you can ask. Mofia, we're waiting for you. Uh -huh. Thanks, Mapalo. Interesting presentation. I think everything was Sorry, clear. The, the, the audio is not that clear. Um, can you get yes, Mapalo, you can, you can talk. Sorry. Can you get me clearly now? Okay, I can get you now. Okay. Is there any software that you would recommend for a new business just to help uh, with financial accountability? Awesome. Okay, so let me recommend QuickBooks. Okay, you look it up for finance for your, your business. I'll recommend QuickBooks. That's the one make life we're we're using. I'll recommend you use QuickBooks or you can create your own tables as well. But that software is it's paid. You need to pay some amount for QuickBooks. Um but yes, if you want to have a financial software, QuickBooks has been rated very good for startups and just for businesses across. So you could consider QuickBooks, but I would advise you to go that route if you are, your, your accounts have already started getting more complicated. But in the meantime, you could always use this, but if, if, if you need a software now for your accounts, I recommend QuickBooks. You take time to look it up. I hope that's okay with you. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. All right, uh, Mopal, how long is the... Okay, how long is the, oh, I have the next one. slide? 
All right, you can go on, you can go on. I can go on? Yeah, yes, please. Yes. Okay, um, I wanted to ask, though, um, I have a business uh, for loans, and I wanted how, to know how efficient it could be regarding um, customers who are, like, uh, not within, what's this? like how do they give out loans with people online i don't know how to uh apply that yet because i feel like my customer base is slowly growing and i'm getting a little bit overwhelmed getting in touch uh, um with people who are outside okay let me just get that again patience is a point i didn't get you clearly you talked about um customers online so just can we rephrase your question so that i can get it clearly yes okay so i want to know how best i can deal with customers who are not within um let's say i operate from lusaka and there are people who are outside lusaka who would, who would like to have access to their loans oh, yeah? but my loans are collateral Based. Based, yeah. So I wanted to know, like, how do businesses organize the online application for loans? And yeah, I don't know if I'm clear now. Awesome. Okay. You are clear and I can answer for you in particular because uh, we actually have an app that's also coming out of uh, Make Life that uh, deals with loans, but it's a different concept from yours. But um, if, let me give you some. Okay feedback that will help you so if you okay. want to manage uh, your customer base growing from uh, say online space your loans like you said need security okay so if you're not doing uh, different types of security apart from physical security then one way mm -hmm. or another you need to make sure you have hands on that particular security so the only the only question you should be asking yourself is how do they get the security to me? And then mm -hmm. how, uh, and then the sending is simple. You send, obviously you can send it via Airtel money, e-wallet and everything and they'll get the money mm -hmm. to you. Okay, so these are three things you should have in mind. The first thing is a uh, collection of the collateral, all right? So maybe mm -hmm. you can position, if you know someone there, within maybe say, Kitway, you have a brother or a sister who doesn't mind collecting for you the collaterals, all right? Maybe they can mm -hmm. be the ones to pick up from that particular place. So all you just mm -hmm. need is someone who can collect the physical collateral. Once that is done, or alternatively, which might come at a cost, though you may need to work with a courier. But I think that would come at a cost and really depends on how big your market is in that space. But that's your mm -hmm. mindset is, oh, let me make sure I, I first get my collateral. I, it's in hand. So once that mm -hmm. is done, the next thing you want to do now is you want to send money, right? And mm -hmm. when you send the money to the person, you can do it through your wallet, whichever means you find preferably for you. Then the third thing is to discover what communication means you will maintain with the clientele. So for us, we manage mm -hmm. a CRM, uh, which is a customer relationship management software. Uh, we use um, ClickUp. Mm -hmm. And so now that okay. really helps us. Uh, sorry, was that a question? No, I'm listening. I'm, I'm listening. listening. Okay. Okay. Great. So yes. So now, what you want to do is you want to be able to have a plan on when you call your customers, your to check up on them, whether it's via WhatsApp, you can get their email, and whatnot. And depending on how much you want your money, you also then can ensure that you can take certain other um precaution steps if you want to get maybe if you want to fill them to fill in a form like the nrsc whatnot that's really up to you depending mm -hmm. on how much uh you want to up your security but if you're fine with the collateral in hand and you know you can still sell it if the default well and good you don't have to steep the securities but those are the three main things you should have in mind so improve your your first your collection it can be a brother it can be courier it can be what Whichever level it is, that's the first thing. The second thing is make sure you figure out how you transfer the money to them. 
and now they transfer it back to you, right? Then the third thing is you just define yeah. how is your communication relationship with them? Are you going to use messages, texts, emails, calls, and how often will you call them? So you need to now manage that on your customer relationship end. I don't know if that's clear. Yeah, that's very clear. Thank you so much. You're welcome, patient. Thank you for the question. If you have any, you can show up. Mondoka, over to you. All right. Stand All right, up. thank you, Paulo, for that uh, clarity. Patience, I guess he's answered your question. Um, anyone with another question? Chimba, yes, Chimba, I'm sure you've got some questions. Charity. Chimba, we're waiting for you. Chimba, waiting for you. All right. Uh, All right. I have a question. Contribution. Okay. But I'm <laughs> the only contribution that I have is to just pass my thanks. Thank you very much, Mapalo. I've learned a lot, and I'm looking forward to apply and making these tables. Awesome. You're welcome, Chimba. Okay, so Papal, I think uh, we can have this next sex, uh, session about uh, the cash flow plans and all that. How is that? For me, it's fine. It's just the people, and I won't take long. I can just cover it to give you an idea. It is mm, fine. Okay, so if everyone wants that. Let me just show you a few. Uh, then I, I, I don't know think if I can conclude the meeting at 50. Is there okay. everyone ready to? to have the next session in the next 10 minutes to conclude. Can I get some yeses in the, in the box? Then if not, we can still have it next week. Still okay with, it, with me. Now we could do next week if people want that next week. Yeah, we can do the first 10 minutes, then we can go to the actual topic. Awesome. All right, so let me just, so this is a booklet by ILO that we use for training. So let me just be able to, I don't know how clear it is. I don't know how to zoom my, uh, go full screen with, um, with this, with the, what's this code again? The reading mode. Um, okay, I don't know how to go full screen with my, okay, but I hope it's clear. Just, just confirm if it's at least clear to some degree. Okay. Da, 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 da. Okay, I will just share it just like this. So a cash flow plan. So like you can see there, a cash flow plan is like a forecast of how much cash you expect to come into and go out of your business. So each month, right? So this is the money going in, the money going out. That's your cash flow plan into your business. Uh, if you've done a bit of also finance, you will get to look at cash flows, uh, at the points that are coming in, going out. And I was about to get too technical, but let me not get too technical. So cash flow is monies that are going into your business and going out. You want to keep track of that. You've heard many people say, make sure that you don't stop having a cash flow. Robert Kiyosaki says that a lot. A lot of uh, people that speak on finance tell you to say, don't run out of cash flow. So this is what they mean. Don't run out of money coming in and going out of your, um, your, 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 your business. Most of so money is actually within your business that can be spent for stuff. So you need to have cash for the money at hand that's available in and out, whether it's money at the bank or money with you, right? So a cash flow plan is a focus of how much cash you expect to come into your business and go out of your business each month, right? So the cash flow plan, and just read that helps you to make sure that your business does not run out of cash at any time. So you should know at what point your monies are going out, what point your monies are coming in. So if I know that I don't get monies in until the month end, I must be very careful that whilst I'm doing my costing, I don't spend all the money. Remember I says 
as a business survive, make sure you don't run out of money. So make sure sometimes you withhold to make certain payments uh, and plan that they should be made after the point when you make money because you never know the emergent needs that may come in. So you need to protect the cash that you have. Know the point money will come in, the point money will go out. Okay, it's very important. And the reasons why uh, you should not run out of money is that you have to build a factory or buy equipment and raw materials before you sell anything, right? So this means that the cash goes out before cash comes in. So that if you're not careful, you're buying your stuff uh, and you don't plan correctly, a lot of money will go out before anything comes in. Before you know it, you'll, you'll close shop. So try to minimize money going out too much so that you have planned enough that by the time uh, your money starts coming back, you're safe. Then if you give credit to your customer, you don't get paid immediately. So don't always do in Congolese business because you must have a cash flow plan. So sometimes when the customer says, can I get on credit? You know, there's those nice voices customers have uh, <laughs> when they're getting your things on credit. Um, you need to be able to remember, oh, okay, does my cash flow plan allow credit? Because then what happens that you, you know that you have money, you'll be saying, Nina and Dama, but you move on to, you know? <laughs> and before you know it, it will, be, will be comforting you that your business died. So instead of me coming to comfort you, let me celebrate you that your business survived because you knew when to give credit and when you couldn't because you planned your cash flow. So let's look at Tasama Cloth. Um, so it's a business and this is the cash flow plan that they have. And I think we, once we look at this, we can even call it a day so that we don't take too much time. So let me just run you through this. So there's cash in, cash out. Okay, you can take a screenshot of this. Um, I wish it was bigger, but you can zoom it when you take it. So, so cash at the beginning of the month. So if I get a 15,000 kwacha in January, this is the money that I have, okay? The cash I'll get from sales for January is 6,500. We already did a sales plan. So you know the sale, total sales that are expected that I maybe say January, June. So you know that, all right? Cash from credit sales, okay? So that's if in case people are borrowing from you and you have such a platform, you would have that filled in. Then other cash in. So if money is coming in maybe from uh, another, another option apart from those products you're selling, maybe it's donations that you're getting from uh, a sponsor, an angel investor who just wants to be able to give you money as a grant, okay? Perhaps it's a grant that's coming in and it's gonna be part of your cash flow overall. You, help out. you want to put it there as well. It's different from your cash sales. So this is all the money coming in. So then you say total cash in, 6,500 in January. Then uh, when it comes to cash out, this purchase of goods, payment of wages. So you know that you pay uh, rent, uh, you pay salaries every month. You make sure you do that. Um, purchase of equipment, uh, if that's, it, so that could be, it could be ingredients. If you're in a service business, probably it could be if you buy a license to use certain platforms to design and whatnot, that would be purchase of equipment. Um, if you have a loan, you need to make sure you put that there, loan repayment and other payments you may be making, all right? And here we can see other payments estimated to 9,200 and whatnot. Uh, those are other payments, all right? So that's um, the payments being made. Then you have your total cash out. So then now you can see how there's now a difference. Cash at month end, that's the difference with the the cash that you have, if you look at that, let's just do that calculation so that we are together. All right, so you can notice here, the cash at the end of the month, one of the reasons why there's a lot here when it comes to um, the difference, you can see there's the 18,000 here, let me just do that calculation for, for us so that I just confirm that there's nothing that I've left out because there's a certain math that I need to ensure I get right here. If you have a calculator, you can help me calculate that. Then we can, so the 13,000 for the month of February, that's the money that came in the money that came out was 7,000. But then you see, you're able to see there's money also at the beginning of the month. 
So the difference here is the addition of the money at the beginning of the month plus the total cash in. When you add those two and you subtract, you get the cash at the end of the month. I don't know if that's clear. So there's carryovers. If you can see from January, the 2,990 goes to February. That money is, is the money carried over. And when you now add that to the money's, the total cash in, that's going to be 15,990. And to subtract that with the total cash out for February, you get 8,180. So that's really how your cash flow should be planned across the board. So when you have your plan, you need to make sure that you have this put into place. You know the money at the beginning, when you get your money, you know how much you're expecting from the cash, the sales from the sales plan, that's going to be your total money is in, the purchase of goods, you know how you'll be purchasing the ingredients for your variable, whatnot and whatnot, your equipment, everything going in, that's the wages, is a fixed cost, like I said. So those are the money is out, you need to know then how much is the total money out at the end of the month, subtracted with the money that came in plus the sales that you made, that gives you the money that you have that can be carried over to the next month. Is that clear for everyone? For your cash flow, how you calculate it? Is that clear? Okay, Mundoka says clear. Great, that's clear. Let me just uh, then be able to summarize this by showing you what we started with here and something that I mentioned for here. Let me see. I, I don't think you're seeing the screen that I'm seeing. I hope, let me stop sharing. Then let me share this again, because I'm seeing another screen, you guys. Remember this? When I talked about steps to building your financial plan, I said make a profit plan, then make a cash flow plan. So do you know how to make both of them? If you do, then now you know how to plan for your finances. The next thing that you need to do are those other two steps that are there now. You need to be able to compare your financial records with both the plans, all right? And then take action if anything is not going according to plan. So this is a crash course in financial planning for your business. I tell you, if you can just master these things I've shared tonight, then you are going to be able to manage your business and it will run smoothly. The things that make businesses work are not that complicated, believe you me. It's the simple things at times that we ignore that actually are the most viable things for business. The simple discipline of you getting to do this may save you a whole lot of trouble. So make sure you get to plan for your finances this weekend and try to get started at being a better financial planner. This has been a session brought to you by Uzapreneurs Conjunction with Make Life International. I was happy to be able to share this. It's great to see those of you who continuously join us. Uh, it's awesome. Let's keep inviting people. Let's share with others as we're sharing with you. Please take time to share the word with others as well so they can benefit. I'm going to hand over to Mondoka to conclude the session. Then we can see each other next week. All right. For those of you uh, who would like to join the ICD Entrepreneurs, you will get a, an invitation as well in the group tomorrow. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mapalo, for the wonderful session. I guess people have learned how to uh, make plans, financial plans. Um, for me, I've learned a lot. Um, open to apply everything I've learned as well. Mm, next week would be awesome to communicate with uh, the group and the topic we'll be looking at next week. Yeah, and I thank you everyone for coming through, for your consistency. For me, it's a plus. Yeah, and uh, Unzapreneurs is working on a magazine. So if you so wish to advertise in the magazine, you're welcome. And I can still, for your consistency, you can talk, can give a discount and have some exclusive uh, packages for you. Yeah, I think uh, for me, it's done. Uh, you can still talk in the group if you need more clarity. 
If you have questions, the group is open. We're there to answer your questions. Um, I think for me, it's a buy. If you have any questions okay, now. So Patience was asking something, Mondoka. She was asking if this would be on YouTube. Mm, so yes, yeah, the recording be will be shared. Mondoka, when will you share the recording? I know, you share it today, because uh, I'm not at home right now. You can share it. Okay, okay yeah. then I'll share it before the night ends. All right, all right. That would be good. Okay, great. So, so, so goodbye from me. Everyone have a lovely weekend. Thank you for being here tonight. Hope I see some of you tomorrow as well. All right, bye, guys. All right, bye.